something that was constantly on my mind. Um, it would be, you know, right before going to sleep, you know, you would think about, okay, check email. Yeah, I could check email. I kind of need to get this done tomorrow. Let's see if I can to finish, uh, let's see, two or three stories and things like totally. that. Totally. And it's the same way even when you don't. Look and like it, it really door. took about two months, I think, to decompress. Really? Not just to emotionally disconnect from my gym, but then to get out of that of that rhythm. I mean, because, you know, I, I have, you know, daily activities now, but it's not like a, you know, IGN is a daily living, breathing thing that you have to act, you have to feed the beast. And so it's it's very different when you work in a more traditional, um, even though it's still video games, but a more traditional job. Yeah, you can, you can leave it at the door. There's not like, like, you, like me and Colin get home, we live together now, and the first thing we do is we open our laptops and usually put something on the page that was late, or check Twitter, and if, if the news breaks are on it, like, you know, I was gonna go out with Scott Little once, and we were gonna go to karaoke, but then the PSN network came back, so me and Colin drove to the office and did a pot you know what I mean? Like, you can't, that is always there. Like, and that's the worst, too. I hate it, because like, I love the internet, Damon, I don't know if you know this. I, I use it quite often. And I, like, when you check Twitter right before bed, and somebody posts something that's yeah. interesting, I'm like, motherfucker, oh, it's back on, boot up the computer, what's happening? But at the same time, that's why, I, you know, like that's what I'm saying, right? That's why IGN continues exactly. to be successful, because it has people that are willing to do that. Whether it burns them out over time or not, well, that, yeah. that can happen. That's another panel. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I mean, that, that's what I learned coming, right? Well, that's a great, that's on the outside in, like, when I was at 1UP, we would have been like, it's 9 o'clock, fuck off. You know what I mean? Like, that just would have been like a totally different mindset about it. And I, and I think that, that level of dedication is why we find it so baffling. Some of the hate for us, you know what I mean? Yes. Can you have a few examples of those? Right? I, I have many examples of the hate for us. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 So we'll go through some of my favorite. I'll give you some examples. Uh, this, of course, is from my layer review. If everybody remembers layer review, the first thing you read. I have. A, I still have an inbox in my. I'm sorry. sorry. Is that that kid's email address? Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Be cool. B E L M O N G 24 at neighbor.com. Body is the light of you is, such, is just trash. It's just the trash. Do you think everyone is blind to death? Your fear of you is trash too. Why does an IG5 is lying? <laughs> and this, and if you know the date, August 30th, I have been working on IG in just a few months. It's like the biggest review I've ever done. That's it was just the trash. So, this is the kind of stuff you get like, you know, you're killing yourself, doing a review. You know, I, not to mention, it's my opinion, you know what I mean? The best part of right now, as far as being a video game fan, hundreds of sites out there, hundreds of opinions. So if you don't like my opinion, or if you don't agree with me on games, you know full and well, you can go check somewhere else, Destructoid, Giant Bomb, all these sites, and find a writer that you know, you agree with, you should be bad. Go to IGN, you <laughs> This is another interesting one, yeah, I will preface here. This, this is, uh, so I put out the few is, hey, if you have anybody, if you see IGN hate, make sure you tell us something in this panel, yada, yada, yada. This one got sent to me, this is Steven Tutillo from Kotaku. This is like a one on the 10 scale. Steven Tutillo, to my knowledge, does a tweet against IGN a lot. Lots of people do. However, Steven tweets, congratulations to IGN for locking up the nine hour exclusive on Toy Story's Cold War review. I don't even know what that, what, what does that mean? Is he say is that we, why would we even care enough yeah. to do that? Like it seems. I don't know that we did care a lot. We just, we just asked probably. Exactly. Yeah. Can we like, review it now? Dude, I'll take a 30 minute exclusive. I want, um, yeah. I want everyone in this room and anyone who reads IG to know that they can go to the site and know that we're busting our ass trying to get you the news and reviews and whatever as fast as we can. The thing is on the internet, being, being first can make all the difference. Well, yeah, plus exclusives are the currency that media companies deal in. So I don't know why anyone would ever criticize a media company for going after an exclusive. Yeah. It, well, you see, and this is the weird thing about our industry in general right now. I mean, granted, video game journalism is incredibly young. There's no rules or style or anything. And I, I mean, coming from somebody who is classically trained to be a journalist, <laughs> like, it horrifies me the conversations that are posted. Like, if you put up, we got this gun stringer uh, exclusive trailer, right? Like, the first time anybody's seen it, it's not from the guys who did the ball. And we posted it, and we're like, oh, we'll do this new, this new detailed page format we're doing, which is basically like, you know, a whole question and then an answer, like a fact. And all we did was base it off the trailer, because that's all we knew. We put that up, and another journalist at another site lost his shit. It was like, I can't believe they keep a talk, give IGN this exclusive preview, and the fact sheet is all they posted. Dude, you didn't see the game. You're talking out your ass, you have no idea what you're saying. And, but like, and he, he gets on there and just puts everybody on blast. It's like, you make not only yourself look foolish, you're making 
the whole industry look foolish. Yeah. They have to get above sitting there and throwing stuff. I never see Stone Phillips tossing rocks at other children. <laughs> Stone Phillips, by the way, paramount journalist. Alright, up next. Oh, uh, this is a, another out of context thing. Anthony previewed Starhawk. Anthony says in the opening that you know, uh, Lightbox is going in a different direction here. They're doing something that I like and I want to see more of. And it's a black main character. That there's not enough black protagonists in the games. There are. I mean, there are uh, characters that you play as that are black, but there are not many black like heroes. Often, if you play a black character, they're like stereotyped to be like all over the cold. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy's like a black person, but he's not like being portrayed as any particular like. He's not like culturally limited or anything like that. You know, he's, he's like a nuanced, interesting character. But yeah. really, and, and they don't make a big deal out of it, but I just think that that's cool, right? Because I would. And that's all he said. That's all he said in the preview. And people lost their shit in the comments. And then someone, you know, another site, Games, you know, went and posted this. And I mean, this is just, you know, all the general Google into the idea of Star Wars. I might have been sucks thing. And this is what happened. <laughs> uh, I have the listener mail that uh, pertains to this topic. Oh, please, hit it. Remember, if you have listener mail, send it to gamestupid.ig.com. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is David Dunn. He says, 99% of the time, which is all the time, there is a white face on the hero, the star, or the main character on video games. I'm tired of it. To look at TV, movies, games, and rarely see myself or anyone that looks like me is hurtful at times. When are you guys on this podcast going to talk about it? <laughs> Done. <laughs> Put it quickly, buddy. It's over. He says, the only black faces I see are Kratos and the guy on Warhawk. Kratos is black? Kratos is Greek. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Let's just go with this. Uh, at least he's got uh, a 30 something white male with a head. Alright? <laughs> we got that far away from it. Well, Greg, we agree that this all changed when Tyler Perry started making video. Oh my god. That's a good movie, man. But I'm going to get video, it goes to jail. You gotta break it down to jail. Here's, here's another example, man. This is pertaining to you. Uh, you got a lot of black for your Castlevania review. And on top of that, uh, David Fox, one of the makers of the game, tweeted about it a couple times. Mm -hmm. How did that make you feel? Well, I don't, that doesn't, it's not about how I feel. I just think it's pretty unprofessional for uh, uh, developers to be publicly complaining about reviews of their games. Here's my thing about it, is that, and it's an interesting thing, right? I think we get the chance to sit there and review a game, and most of the time we try to be Objective and understand that no matter how bad a game was, it took years to make. I mean, don't say it. I was gonna say, don't say it. When you say the word objective, you know what I mean. I, I, I mean, I'll put all the Like my non fair review was awesome and totally was in the moment of how much I hated that game. But I said some things in there about like I took like shots at developers like they shouldn't make game and like that that was over the line. I shouldn't have done that. You know what I mean? Because like this is an example. I don't. I, I've never been on the other side. We're sitting here complaining about how. Foolish how much we hate, like, you know, these hateful comments we get. But what, what what's, the developers, what's the developers out, out, you know, what's their output when they get the game that they, get, their game is shit They thought it was good. But, and I guess, again, 7.5, shit about it. But, uh, is there any answer? How, 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 can they, how can the developer have a conversation? How can they talk about, like, I didn't agree with the score? I mean, is it, it could just be more than, I mean, the yeah, tweet yeah. that you're watching at home, sorry, if you're listening at home, it's nice to see people saying the I, that I can review for what it is, dot, dot, dot. And it's I mean, not, he has many other tweets that yeah. about the review, too. Um, yeah, I, I just think there's a, a way to go about doing that. Uh, you know, conversations don't necessarily have to happen in public forums. Like okay. at, at the same time, having shit talked about you sometimes is like a good way to know that you've done something right. Like, uh, when I reviewed Blur for IGN, and there was like the that day's penny arcade comment, like like directly was about my blur review, and 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 there then his like typo's write up was talking shit about my blur review, and I was like yes, <laughs> like, that's like a, that's like a sign that made it's like being made fun of in South Park or something. Like that. <laughs> and you actually piss someone off who in the scheme of the internet matters. So it's kind of you know, sometimes I, you have to have a thick skin about it. Of course. Although I will say sometimes they do get to me right, like when people were saying that I was like a racist for that Star Wars article, like. You want to talk shit about me, but yeah, it wants to be like, uh, that's like challenging something that's like fun yeah. to love my character. But, um, but yeah, you have to deal with a lot of things because you. <laughs> this, is, this is getting into just the random shit talking for no reason. This is, this is posted on my IGN wall. You're the worst editor on the site. Have you ever thought about quitting? <laughs> I have not. <laughs> yeah, uh, Anthony put together a feature for us called Common Comeback. Yeah, where right. editors will respond to the comments. Right, I mean, so we touch on things like, you know, like, uh, for instance, when we did the Brave review, right, and the editor that wrote it, uh, Peter Adams, 
he was talking about how it's a really repetitive game. And, uh, you know, and, and, and to some extent, you know, yes, every game, you can, you can always distill every game down to like, yes, you run and shoot, you do this. The problem is that the games that make you aware of it are the problem. But because he dared to call a shooter repetitive, the comments just turned into, I can't get paid to write nothing but good reviews about Call of Duty, and all they care about is Call of Duty because that game's a repetitive piece of shit, and on all we do is suck Activision's dick. <laughs> That's like what we have to hear, right? And it's so, it's so ridiculous the thought that we get paid for reviews, because honestly, if we got paid for reviews, first off, I wouldn't bother doing a panel in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't care, I'd just be rich, I wouldn't give a fuck about anybody anymore. Or I would drive with a really awesome car, or I wouldn't be wearing you have a helicopter. Beat up ass shoes. Yeah, I have a motorcycle. But we don't, you like, you don't, none of that happens. Like, what, what people don't often understand, you know, and they, they think it's really this big faces corporation, like, we're working with our marketing company to make sure that we write yeah. a really good review for the site, for the game that has ads on our thing. But you can look at it, that isn't true, because, like, when that break review went up, or, like, a uh, metal even. burger review went up that was, like, not exactly positive, like, our site was all branded metal on it. We have no clue. I have no clue day to day what's going to be skinned up on our site. And that's intentional. You know, they don't want it to influence our editorial. Exactly. Uh, Levi, I think the situation in the wireless gaming world is a little bit different in terms of pay, pay for reviews. Yes. Right? <laughs> I mean, there are, so there are mobile gaming sites that all they do is review iPhone games. Now, this phenomenon has actually disappeared, but in, really? the, in the beginning, well, maybe, I mean, at least I, I don't agree with, with any site that's like that. Um, but in the beginning, when iPhone got first really popular, and there were you know thousands and thousands and thousands of apps, there were smaller sites that would, um, for the uh, for fifty dollars, we will expedite your review. We will make sure that your 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 app or game is reviewed sooner. And that was always really shady. That was something we never did uh, at iGen, though it was offered quite often. So if I send you a promo code and two hundred dollars, can my review go up this week? <laughs> yeah, we actually have really stringent. Now your review is never going up. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have really stringent codes that I do about gifts too. Like anything that's like straight up money, like people have sent. Like I forgot what dumb game it was. That was like it's a it was Dante's Inferno. Dante's Inferno because it was like it was like greed. You know, it was like oh, it's the the sin of greed, so we send you money or some bullshit like that. We're like no, we can't take this. You know, we can't take gifts that are like over the value of the game. So that comes up all the time. Like, people get shit and we're like, oh, that's when we end up giving it away on Twitter and stuff like that. Because we, it, not compromising their values is very important to the editors. I mean, like, you know, that's, again, people just think that all these IGN guys are just like, fuck it, all we care about is your clicks and your money, fuck up. That's totally not true at all. No, I mean, you would me with Infamous and Colin Allen Resistance, right? Like, these are games that we were arguably are the most knowledgeable about being Infamous, Colin with Resistance. And so now those reviews come around and we both go, no, I'm not going to review it because we don't want the people who are haters, or you, the real fan, to read the review, like, well, I can't trust this. Greg's the tank for infamous all the time, and I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, how, so how do you deal with it? Because, like, most of us don't get offended by comments. I've been letting a few scroll by here about how uh, IGN has no opinion, their shit, blah, blah. Uh, do you just disagree with them? What do you do, Dan? Yeah, I mean, you, you, like we were saying earlier, you, you, I think you learn pretty quickly when you work in this industry, not just at IGN, probably just, probably any internet site that has a comment system. You have to learn pretty quickly to develop a thick skin. And it, you know, it's also, you have to keep perspective in mind. The people commenting on articles are a very uh, vocal minority. It's probably less than 5% of the people that yeah. actually read these. Yeah, I figure our, our you know, biggest story of the day, like, you know, 100,000 new visitors or whatever, and maybe there's 100 comments on it. You know, yeah, like that. so it's like less than 1% of people. You know, and it's just like people think Neo Gap is like something that is like this like end all be all way you know the opinion of the internet. But that's not true. Right? Yeah. I mean Neo Gap is a very small community as well. Very vocal, not unimportant, but you know, it's just not you can't gauge would be how I mean how you be the worst site in the world. We would have no visitors if you base it off and give you half opinions. Exactly. Trouble. But now Twitter's being interesting. Uh, Twitter is giving us a lot of comments right away. <laughs> this one uh, this one I pull up because uh, everybody I put posted this thing and said also Game over Greg, you can go deep throw a car exhaust. He don't say that hunts completely British. No, but I'm thinking about it. I did not I did not review a game this day. I did not do anything. I did not have a video. At 10 57 4 in the morning, this is what was on my Twitter. And like that boggles my mind that somebody who hasn't met me can hate me that much. And so I I, I went to this kid, what is he? Oh, he's a gamer and an aspiring journalist. Yeah. <laughs> really? At what point do you think this is acceptable behavior for someone who wants to call themselves a journalist or anybody? You know what I mean? And so I responded back to him. I said, you know, thanks for listening and reading. And his response was, I didn't either. Well, how, how the hell do you know you don't like that? 
I think the important thing about this to see the, the tweets or the Facebook comments or the comments on the story is that just the unbridled hate just drowns out a legitimate conversation. I would, I was thrilled when I would get a, a comment, even if it was negative, if it had substance. So 